Hi everybody, my name is Cynthia, this is Tiny Tech Talks and in this series I'm going to show you the very basics of Adobe XD to create a style guide and a basic mockup for your client's website. Now this is not going to be a full tutorial on how Adobe XD works. If you're interested in web design, I will link a few nice resources down in the description. Let's go ahead and look at Adobe XD. So when you open Adobe XD, you will see that there are already some predefined sizes. Usually I do work with one of the predefined sizes. However, you can always create a custom size artboard if you like. The only times I personally use it is if I know I'm going to use a certain grid system or something like the Oxygen Builder, which has a specific page size already set up. But for the purpose of this series, I'm just going to go with the standard website size. Now that our file is created, one thing I do recommend doing is actually going into the plugins, which is down at the left bottom and then actually add two plugins. There are multiple available. You can always browse through them and see which one you might need or want to install but the ones that i actually usually have installed is a list plugin as adobe xd does not have a list option built in automatically and then also a lauren ipson or a placeholder insert plugin because that will save you some time when working with lorem ipsum text if your client has not provided any content. I already created a very basic style guide that I will link in the description below so you guys can download it and then modify it according to your needs or your client needs. Now I'm quickly going to go over this guide so it's just a title page and then the first thing we have are our colors. Now this placeholder text is where if you want, you can put some extra explanation about the colors used. Maybe even if there is a specific rule when or when not to use a color, all of that information goes in here. Now, I like to have a primary and a secondary color. And then for these versions, I also like to have a lighter and a darker variant so that we can use those for like hover states or active states. Then I usually also include a gray color with again, a lighter and a darker version available. And then there is a success alert and info color that I like to include as well as two gradients based on that primary primary and that secondary color. If you are lucky, your client will already provide you with at least a primary color, hopefully also a secondary color. Now, if that is not the case, I will show you the tools I usually use to create a color palette and the color variations on these colors. Now the tool I use to generate color palettes is a website called colors.co and it is really nice because they already have some predefined palettes available. So you can either choose one of these or even adjust them if you want, or you can just go ahead and generate your own color palette. So when you go into the generator, it will automatically give you a basic color palette. If you don't like it, just hit the space bar and it will regenerate new colors. So let's say I do like these two blue colors. I can actually lock down in place. And then if I hit the space bar again, it will only switch up these three that are not locked and I can just go ahead and create all of the colors that I like. So let's say I do like this color palette. I can actually also use this feature called export to export it in a bunch of different ways. Or one of my favorites is either the SVG or the CSS where you can get like the hex code that you will need for Adobe XD or even just to code in your website. So to create the lighter and darker variant, I actually use a different tool. So I'm going to copy the hex code of this dark blue and then head over to Peloton. Now I'm going to paste in that hex code I just copied in here, hit OK. And then as you will see, it will create a palette based on that one color I just put in. So you can just easily copy over this hex code 
into the Adobe file and then use that as the lighter color and then also copy over this hex code to use it as the darker color and you can do this with the secondary color you want to use as well. So those are mainly the tools I use for my color creation. The links for these will also be in the description. So now that you have your color palette, you can easily change it by just selecting this rectangle and then clicking on the fill option. And this is where you can paste in those hex codes. To change the text, just select this text box and paste in that hex code as well. And then to make the gradients, what I actually usually do is I just go to the fill, make sure it is set to linear gradient, then select the first color and use the eyedropper tool to select that first primary color and then select the other end of the gradient and then again use this eavesdropper tool to change out the current color for your primary color. So once you've finished and you switched out your colors for the ones you want to use, I am actually going to use one of the features that I do like in Adobe XD and that is this document assets panel. So you can find it if it's not selected right down here. It's the first tab and you can actually add color. So if I select this first rectangle and I hit this little plus icon, you can see it added that color. And I'm going to do this for every single color that I have. So now that you have added every color in this color scheme, you can actually go ahead and rename some of them so it's easier to find them. I like to keep the hex code inside of the name, but then put primary in front of my primary color. So I know that that is my primary color and then also do the same for that secondary color. And of course you can do this as well for all of the other colors. That's kind of up to you whether or not you want to go ahead and rename all of them. But you actually also always have this as a reference. So next up is our typography. Now again there is a small area right here where you can explain a bit more about the fonts used or explain why you use a certain font. Now in this example I have Helvetica for the headings and then Roboto as the body. This again is set to that specific font so you can kind of see how it looks and Usually for fonts, the only thing that I try to pay attention to is that it is a web safe font. Now there are definitely some lists available that tell you which fonts are web safe or safe to use on web. Now if you're looking for a bit of an inspiration for a font, you can always go to fonts.google.com and this will give you all of the Google fonts. Now not every single font that is available here is a web safe font. So if you find a font do a quick Google search and make sure that it's web safe. Now a nice thing though about these Google fonts is that it actually provides you with some pairings. So let's say I like this Lotto font. If I click it and then go into pairings it will show you some of the fonts that go well together with that Lotto font. So this is definitely a website where you can get a bit of inspiration in terms of typography. The last thing included in this basic style guide is a page where the logo goes. Again, similar to the other pages, you have a bit of a text area where you can put in some information and then you can put in the logo variations. Usually I would have a full color logo, then a monotone logo, as well as a white or a completely black logo. And then usually I also like to have a simplified or a smaller icon and and then you can also insert the favicon that will be used on the website. So that's why I have five different gray squares. So just put in all of your logo variations on this page and then you will basically have a nice simple style guide. If you want, Adobe does allow you to export this as a PDF. So if you go up to file and then go to expert, select all of the art parts in this case, and then you can choose to save it as a PDF and these will be saved 
in a single PDF file as separate pages. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. In the next videos, we will take a look at where I get my inspiration as well as how you can actually build a mockup in Adobe XD. And we will also look at some of the options that Adobe XD provides in terms of making it a bit more interactive. Now, if you like this video, feel free to leave a like or a comment. And if you like to get a notification of when my next video is uploaded, then feel free to subscribe and hit the bell so that you get a notification. Thank you again so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.